Good morning team, how you doing? Ray here and uh, you join me on an average Wednesday morning in Wellington. Well, I'm in Upper Hutt, we're gonna commute though. My morning commute this morning, I'm decked out in the Magna bush shirt, the Magna casual riding gear and the Magna jeans as well, which you can't really see. But uh, this morning, we are commuting on the brand new Harley Davidson Sportster S. Check it out in all its glory and uh, wow. She's a, she's a hungry looking beast, isn't she? Decked out in black. It's uh, powered by the 1250 um, Revolution Max engine. All electric and water cooled from Harley Davidson. And today we are commuting into Wellington in style. Let's go. All right, what can I tell you about the Harley Davidson Sportster S? I think if you're gonna be riding a Harley, you've gotta be doing it in style. Hence why I'm wearing the Magna casual, casual riding gear. I've got the Style Martin Kansas sneakers on. And the Harley is a pretty picture as well. It's got these cool little Bahrain mirrors. They're uh, official Harley. The bike itself, it's a uh, foot forward design. All electric. Let's fire it up. We've got a full color display. We've got riding modes. We've got uh, sport. Rider mode A, which is customizable. Rain and street. Traction control, ABS. Everything's customizable as well. You can connect it to your app and control your music and your navigation. But I think we'll just ride it, eh? We've got cruise control, we've got heated grips. I don't know how to get the heated grips to work. They don't seem to work on this particular bike. Foot forward feeting position. Twelve fifty CC engine. Now they've tweaked it slightly from the Pan America. Uh, I think they've brought the torque down a little in the rev range. It's got that massive fat tire on the front, which uh, takes a little getting used to. Um, comfortable wise. Comfortable wise? Yeah. English is going to slide. It's a Wednesday morning and I'm commuting to work. Comfortability. Comfortable ergonomics. There's no pillion seat. There's not a hell of a lot of rear end suspension travel. So you're going to feel all the bumps. But she revs out really nicely. Cruise control on. Okay. Now what can I tell you about this bike? She's very stable. Clinch with the knees. I don't have to hold the bars. It's a, a much more stable bar setup than the Pan America. The Pan America had a little bit of wobble in the bars. I, uh, I can't talk about the, uh, the science behind that, but I'll just tell you what I feel. These bar in mirrors look cool. They're a little bit small. But I can see what's going on if I adjust them correctly. We've got a foot forward position here for the pegs. I would love the pegs be a bit more below me, a little bit uh, further back, but it is what it is, it's a Sportster, right? And Harley have gone for this massive aggressive look with the big fat front tyre. 
As far as uh, wind protection goes, there's none. Which, I mean, we're coming into winter now. It's autumn. It's it's a bit chilly, so dress accordingly. But um, it does mean that there's no buffeting. You've got an even flow of air all over your body, all over your head. So yeah, you can hear the wind, but it's not uh, it's not horrible. It's just an even whoosh. For this sort of riding, I think this is where the bike excels. This uh, smooth highway cruiser. But also, that 1250 Revolution Max engine can be savage. I talked about the riding modes. I've set up the custom riding mode to be a uh, no traction control. As little traction control, as little ABS as possible. Uh, you can set the different amounts of engine braking. You can set different amounts of throttle savageness. And I've put it all right on the savage end. I've bumped it all up as high as it'll go. The bike itself has a, a Bluetooth enabled. So if you download the Harley Davidson app, you can control your music and everything via the switch gear on my uh, left hand side. This is all the same switch gear and buttons and controls as the Pan America. So I was kind of used to it from the get go. Let's talk about the switches. On my right hand side we've got a mode button right here. This is the uh, ignition. So we've got a keyless ignition system. I've got the key fob in my pocket. Flick that, push the button, it starts up. Then over here we've got controls for our GPS and music. Traction control button down here. Voice commands here. On my left we've got heated grips, a button to cycle through our information. We've got range showing at the moment. That's our trip A, trip B, odometer. Outside temperature is 17 degrees. I'd dispute that at the present point in time. And back to range. Cruise controls here up on top. We've got a headlight flasher button. And the rest of this is for controlling the, uh, the TFT display. Indicators are down here, horns down here on my left thumb. What else can I tell you about the bike? It's a little bit bumpy, which is why I think it's, uh, it, it excels at highways. At, at top speed, not top speed, but you know what I mean. Let's compare it to this bike coming up on my right hand side. There you go, Suzuki Boulevard. You can definitely hear that. You can hear that a lot more than you can hear this. This has got the stock exhaust. I'm a little bit nervous about lane splitting in this because of the bar end mirrors. They're, they stick out a little bit more than I'm used to. What else have I got to say about this bike? Have I got any gripes? Um, the first time I rode it, I kept going from first into neutral. I had to make a conscious decision to pull the gear lever a bit further to get second. That's an adjustment thing, it's nothing against the bike. Although, I haven't been able to adjust it because I don't want to pull the whole bike apart and it does require removal of the belly pan, the fairing underneath the engine. That's irritating. But once you set it, you wouldn't need to reset it, you know? I'd like to move the uh, gear lever just forward a little bit. If you've ridden a Harley before, you'll know that stereotypical clunk as it goes into first gear. I don't have that on this bike. There's no... There's no obvious clunk as it goes into gear. It's a very smooth gearbox, actually. And because the Revolution Max can handle some revs, it, uh, it feels really good. Redline at, what, a 9,000 revs. does not sound as throaty as that uh, uh, boulevard though. Tires aren't as wide either. Keeps up. To the legal speed limit at least anyway. 
Uh, earlier in the year, I rode the Sport Glide, the Harley Davidson Sport Glide, which um, Harley Davidson purists will probably shoot me for saying this. I find this bike very similar to that, although slightly less practical. Of course, the Sport Glide has the factory panniers. This doesn't have any luggage at all. If you can't get it in your pockets or in a backpack, you can't really take it with you. I'm getting used to the seating position. I'm not I'm not used to it like I don't ride a foot forward cruiser every day. But I love this as a cruiser because it's still got that sport bike kind of power. It still feels like a modern motorcycle. Because the Revolution Max engine is just so good. So versatile. From my seated position right now, I can see the front tyre. I'm always reminded that it's a massive, really, really fat front tyre. Which um, makes handling interesting. You kind of have to force it into a corner. You have to tell this bike where to go. It's got quite a bit of lock, and the pegs are quite high, so you can get a good bit of lean angle on it. But you do feel every single bump. You want to be avoiding those manhole covers. Because I've got the... I've, so I've taken all the uh, preload out of the rear suspension. It's got adjustable suspension. It's got a, a, a remote preload adjuster underneath my left, left buttock. Um, and I'm told that putting a bit more preload... Oh, there's the manhole covers. Into it would make it handle better. I, I, will, I will tinker with that. Oh, that one realigned my spine. You can see that there's not a whole lot of... Uh, rear suspension travel. And seeing a few other reviews on YouTube, it's... Um, it's kind of the one gripe that most motorcycle journalists seem to have with this bike. But... It is what this bike is, right? Harley just wanted to make something seriously cool to to grab the attention of the people. And I think they've done that. Uh, talking to a few of my colleagues, they say, Oh, black's a terrible motorcycle. One, to keep clean, but two, to photograph. And I have seen Matthew Day Gillett over at uh, On Throttle. He was lucky enough to get a white version of this bike. And it looked fantastic in his photos. No, I like it. I think it looks great. Most Harleys, I think, look great. Most. Not all. But it's it's cool to have a uh, a cruiser. You know, this is a classic Harley. It's, the, it's not a classic, but it, it, it's sticking true to the classic Harley vibe and Marbo, you know? It's cool to have a classic Harley with a, with a new engine, with a modern... 1250cc, electronically fuel-injected rider modes called engine that can rev. 9,000 revs is pretty good. Fuel economy isn't too bad. It is a 1250cc engine after all. It's got a thimble for a fuel tank. I filled it up. It cost me 20 bucks in current day fuel prices. I think it took 10 litres from memory. I'll chuck that up on the screen for you if I remember. But it didn't it didn't cost me much. It didn't take much gas and it was stone cold empty. I reckon I was going to get about 200 k's to the 20 bucks. And I think maybe you'd stretch that out to 220-ish. But you're not going to be driving, you're not going to be riding past many fuel stations, that's for sure. Seat height is very approachable. I can sit on the bike with a, a bent knee. I'm, what, 174 odd centimetres in seam. I think we worked out was about 760 millimetres. Self-cancelling indicators. 
which I they make a lot more sense on this bike than they did on the Pan America. They seem to work properly on this bike. I still like to be able to cancel my own indicator because changing lanes, you never quite know if the indicator is still on or not. I don't know if it's registered that it's cha I've changed lanes. Uh, roundabouts, that sort of thing, we have to indicate left and right. But it's got all the electronics, it's cool. And for my morning commute, it's reasonably comfortable. It's got the power to nip through a gap if you want it. Let's talk about those rider modes. If you haven't ridden a bike with rider modes before, this comes with street, sport, and rain. Rain is going to bump up that traction control and really retard the throttle. Um, so it's, it's not going to be a snappy throttle at all. You're going to main, it's going to help you maintain traction in the wet. I'm in street at the moment, which is reasonably forgiving, but it still has the power to to make a maneuver or you know take a take a spot. Sport, that's um, that's it's quite a snappy throttle response. It's quite a twitchy throttle response. It's not very nice for highway commuting, but it's um, it's all out attack mode. And then you've got your custom mode. So if, uh, it, it basically when you when you set up a custom mode, it asks you what um, what mode you want to base it off, what mode you want to copy the settings from, and then you can tweak from there. So you can. Uh, remove some, there's our mate on the boulevard again you can uh, add or remove uh, engine braking you can add or remove throttle snappiness you can uh, change the traction control and ABS modes of course this bike doesn't have an off-road mode like the Pan America does it's not made for off-road I think that goes without saying Well, you guys will know, I ride a, a Tenere 700 daily, except when I have uh, a mate's bike on loan or, you know, a press bike. This is a cool bike. And of any of the Harley lineup currently, probably the one I would lean towards, this or the Pan America. And I think it's all based on that engine. The Revolution Max 1250cc engine. This is the Rev Max 1250T. I mentioned they've fettled with it slightly. To give it a, a different power, like the power's in a different place on the Rev range. Um, an adventure bike, you when you're getting off-road, you, you spend a lot more time in the higher-end revs. They've brought the power down in the Rev range on this bike. More usable torque. And it definitely, it, it works. There's, there's torque from from bugger all revs. And on deceleration, there's a wee bop, 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 bop. Which is quite nice. I think you put a Screaming Eagle exhaust or any other aftermarket exhaust on this bike and... Yeah, it would sound great. You can still lane split, as I'm doing. just got to be mindful of what you're riding so yeah if this was my bike I would spend the time to remove that belly pan so I could actually get in and adjust the shifter location but this is a cool bike this works it makes sense you can also change the brightness of the uh, way around TFT LCD display there too you can put it on auto brightness or you can select a brightness. I've got the brightness right up at the moment. I thought I wanted that. Um, riding it the other night, I found it was a little bit too bright. Uh, living with this bike would be difficult for me without any luggage. I like some luggage. I like to be able to chuck stuff on the bike as opposed to wearing a backpack and loading up my pockets with keys and wallet and crap but that may not be how you like to ride your bike so if you're like me then maybe this bike isn't the bike for you 
Uh, if you get it around this corner here, with that big fat front tire, I'm, I'm having to employ a lot of counter steer. It's not a bad thing, but it's just it's the way that front tire is. And there we are, that's my morning commute. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications on more videos. All that jazz. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.